All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning. We got a small crowd, but we got a lot of people on vacation today. A lot of yeah. this side over here is uh, is cleared out, cleaned out. It's good to have us, uh, you folks that did come. We're very glad to have you. <clears throat> Uh, we got a card here from uh, Lucy May's family. It says, for your uh, loving heart and your helping hands. In loving memory of Lucy May's family and friends. And they have donated, uh, instead of doing flowers, they just made some donations, donations to the church. We got one check for $450 and one check for $50. So they've donated $500 to the, to the uh, church here that we'll put in the offering today. Like I said, it's good to see everybody this morning. You got a song, Bill, we start this with this morning? Yes, sir. That's the 36. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? That's what we're counting on, Ed. Absolutely. I, I did forget to mention, Randall, I guess you did for the uh, Sunday school offer. Now, Amanda wasn't here, but she usually takes that. So if anybody was interested in donating to the Sunday school, I'll take that today. <laughs> okay. Since Jeremy ain't here, I guess I have to sit in his stead for the uh, offering uh, later on as well. No, 36. 36. 36. Hey, we got to sing loud this morning, guys. We got a kind of small crowd this morning, so we're expecting to hear from you over there, Rick. Help us out. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? Ended said before as a, a year or so after my dad died I was driving home uh, from work and uh, 
<clears throat> I was trying to think of somebody that used to come in our gas station. I thought, well, I get on my call that and ask him. He'll know who it was. You know, he'd been gone for a year at yes, least at, at that point. So you never forget them, and thank God you don't forget them. You know, their memories uh, uh, usually become better as time goes on. You kind of forget the bad times, and you and you focus more on the good times. So God is a great and merciful God. Thank Him for that. We'll go ahead and take up some prayer requests. I will for the uh, for the video. I will say this is New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. We're at the corner of Twelfth and Central. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. And as we do take up uh, the offering, if you uh, would like to send in your offering, you can send in the P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. And as always, thank you for what you've given. Thank you for what you will give. We will go ahead, though, and take up the prayer requests. And uh, uh, we got some people out uh, that are, are traveling. Uh, we'll be traveling back, I guess. It probably all reached their destinations now, but uh, we'll be traveling back in a couple week or two. But ask uh, traveling mercies for them, and, and then they will have a safe trip while they're there. Amen. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, they found my ex sister in law, well, but Jeff's wife, Sandra, dead the other morning. Oh, really? So he died how long ago? My, a brother, um, my brother in law. Sonia? Sonia, I'm sorry, Sonia. They found her dead in the house the other morning. And he died how long ago? Oh, quite a One years. year after Ronald. Yeah. So it's been how long? I don't even know how long. 2014 or 2016. <coughs> Time passes too quickly, you know. And, uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Ollie? Um, Wilbur Turner's brother passed away on Friday. Which one? Uh, Goose. William Alfred. William Alfred. Oh, Goose. Goose did? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. What, what was wrong with him? Double pneumonia. Double pneumonia. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, keep them in your prayers. Uh, Elsie? Yeah, my family. Okay. No sin or family. Anybody else? Buddy? Yeah, Gene and Pat and uh, our cousin uh, losing her husband a couple weeks ago. She's still, uh, she still needs her prayer. Who's that? Our cousin Carol, uh, Bob Mays, he passed away a couple weeks ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Anybody else? We got any more? Oh, yes, ma'am. She's going to kill me for this, but my mother-in-law, they have her on some medicine for a heart. Her heart's not beating correctly, so just pray that the medicine... Desi? That, yeah, that they have her on. Okay. Uh, it works, and, you know... And Russell uh, wasn't doing... He's still, yeah, he's a little better, but, yeah, he can always use prayer, but he, to him, there's always other somebody that needs it worse than him, but... Sure, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, that's... Uh, You'll help her with those prayers out when you can think of it. Yes. Um, Tyler and his family. Yeah, Tyler has some uh, hernias. He just found three hernias in his, in his stomach. He's in quite a bit of pain and stuff. So uh, uh, pray for him and his family as well. What else do you say? And, and Terry knows uh, somebody at, at McDonald's that their mother uh, has had a stroke and, and he has been there for the last couple of days. So he's probably, uh, she's probably passing away or. or Maybe already has. Who else? Anybody else? Somebody mentioned this morning about a uh, man that had shot his three children, killed them. Uh, I hadn't heard that before. They before he mentioned that, and that, yeah. uh, that's that's horrific for sure. So pray for that family. Uh, so that's, that's certainly unimaginable. Unimaginable. The grief that mother for sure is going through. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? But uh, Tanya was saying some good news there. Her, 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 her brother who has uh, MS, I guess he's still in a lot. He's got a lot of issues going on. But his son, he's able to see him. He hasn't been able to see for a long time. He's able to see him. So that's a that's a good thing. Anybody else? Anybody got a silent request on their heart? God knows your heart. He knows what we stand in need of. All right, let's have a man that will come on up and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we preach. Lord, we just ask you this blessing, Lord, if only you can. 
We ask, Lord, that you would just bless all the prayer requests that are mentioned here this morning. And we ask you all in the name of your Son, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. Amen. I feel like traveling on. If you're able to, go ahead and stand up. If you're not able to, you can remain seated. We're going to go ahead and take up the offering. And Dale has a song there. I feel like traveling on. What is it? 47. 47. 47. 47. You know, I heard uh, Kim say that uh, the one fellow didn't want to bother God. But, you know, he's a big God. He answers big prayers and small prayers, guys. He gave them. And that's what he's there for. He wants us to come to him. So we should. We should all the time. Take all of them to him. <clears throat> My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Nor pain nor death can enter there. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like
I got a special song they want to sing today. Special song. Rick, Debbie, special song. <laughs> Tanya and Dale, you want to sing? Well, he's just going to go say hi to our guests. And, and, and remember to uh, always in, and, uh, invite our guests and then and tell them you're, uh, yeah, come on up and sing one if you want to. And always tell them you're glad to have them here and uh, welcome them. We need to be welcome as, as, you know, as children of God, we ought to welcome all people that want to worship God with us. We ought to be, uh, you know, ought to be willing to do that and able to do that at any time. Ready to do that. Come on up whenever you're ready and, uh, and sing one for us. Oh, right. and just slow. <laughs> well, that happens to us, don't it? Mm -hmm. Shackled by a happy bird. Standing in the need of prayer, 
It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Have you got, you guys got another Dale you and Tony? I just hang on to the baby and Dale. Why are you singing that? Have you got another one? No, she said she was uh, none. She was okay. <laughs> well, you come on up and then you and Dale will sing one. I got a book right here. Send the light. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> Number one, that's the front. That number is. One, that is. Not one A. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, just number one. There is not one A. There. Yeah, okay. but you don't want the one A. No, we don't know that one, do we? Uh, page number one, sing with us here. There's a call come ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. 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 The blessed gospel light. Let it shine. Let it shine from shore to shore. From shore to shore. Send the light. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Light the world. Let it shine. Anybody else have one they'd like to sing? Or have someone sing? Allie, you and uh, your sister got one you want to sing? <laughs> you don't have to, baby. I'm only kidding. Only kidding. Buddy's been talking about having one, but he ain't quite ready for it yet, are you? I'll get with you, sir. Okay. All right. We're going to rush it. You take your time whenever you feel like it. If you want us to help you with it, let us know, and we'll, we'll try to help you with it, even yeah, if we can. All right, that's well, you understand that for sure. Uh, what you've been through. Let's uh, go ahead and turn over to uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 16. Genesis 17, 16. As I said earlier, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Glad to have you here today on this special day. Let's go ahead and uh, open a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for all you do for us. We just ask that you bless uh, me today, Lord, as I give this message. Uh, and, and you just anoint me with the ability to preach, Lord, and prepare 
congregation to receive a message. That would in some way help them, will some way please you, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. We'll give you all the glory, praise, and honor for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I said, <clears throat> Genesis 17, 16. And today I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to try to show you some things from the Bible about the word laughter. About the word laugh and about the word laughter. And so, something maybe <clears throat> you may have known or may not have known about or may not have realized. The dictionary says this about a laughter. That is an, an auditory expression of a number of positive emotional states such as joy, mirth, happiness, and relief. In other words, it's, it's a sound that we make when we're happy. It's a sound that we make when we're happy. Uh, but we, we do laugh for some other reasons. There's other reasons that we laugh and other reasons that people laugh sometimes. And, and we laugh when we're embarrassed. When we're, we're confounded or, or confused about something, we laugh uh, when somebody else does something or we do something that's stupid or ridiculous. And uh, we laugh in contempt sometimes at people to scorn someone. The laughter is cruel sometimes. It's, it's cold and it's cruel sometimes. You know, we laugh in disbelief about things. We talk about things like a barrel of laughs. You know, give them a barrel of laughs. We talk about uh, a laugh a minute. We were just in Florida. We were just talking about being in Florida here for the last couple of weeks. And, uh, and uh, uh, we're visiting with Tyler and his family. And they have a, a new uh, little baby girl. And uh, her name is Salem. She's six months old now. And she's just started to have what they call belly laughs, which is beautiful. You know, it's adorable, that little innocent baby with those big laughs. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when things are not funny, it's, we say it's no laughing matter. And some things are not a laughing matter. Some things, Junior Raleigh, when he used to get up to preach, he'd always say, oh, this is serious business. Sure, folks. And it is serious business. Yeah. It is serious business. You know, when you get revenge on somebody for doing something wrong to you, you say that, uh, the, that you get the last laugh. And, you know, to, to some people, it's real important to have the last laugh. You know what God said about that? God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. We need to leave things up to God. There was a time that God told Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. That he would be a father of many nations. But you know, Abraham was very old that time, 99, I believe, when God came and told him that. And his wife, Sarah, was almost 90 years old. And, and although Abraham believed God, because the Bible does say that God, that, that Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him to righteousness. But you know what? Abraham didn't have faith in his own self. He didn't have faith in his own body. He didn't have faith in, in Sarah being 90 years old that she could have it. Because the Bible says this about her. It says that it ceased to be with Sarah after the custom of women. So this seemed like an impossibility to Abraham. Do you know when things are impossible for man, it's still possible for God, isn't it? Right. It still is possible. Abraham had already tried to take matters into his own hand by getting with uh, his uh, wife Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar. And they had a son, a child they called uh, Ishmael. Yeah. And then God, when God came back to Abraham and he affirmed with Abraham, he said, you will indeed have a son. That, that Ishmael will not be the heir. Uh, to your household, he said, but you will have a son, uh, a son of promise. And uh, he told him that uh, at, at 99 years old, at 90 years old, Sarah would have that. And Abraham at 100 years old, they did have that. Now, this is what Abraham said when, he, when uh, God told him this. In uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 16, it says, And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. This is what Abraham did. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? It was a, God was able to do that, wasn't he? Well, we do know that it did, it did happen. Go ahead and turn over to Psalm, uh, Psalm 126, verse 1. Psalm 126, verse 1. Psalm 126, verse 1. Now Sarah also laughed. We can read that. Sarah also laughed, but she, she, she denied it. Out of fear, she was afraid, and she denied it that she laughed. But you know, you can't fool God. He knew that she had. He knew that she had, and, and He knows your very thoughts. He knows the intents of your heart. Now, you, you know, there, there's a, after a particular uh, difficult time in your life, maybe, maybe it's been a big sickness or, or, or maybe a, a disease, a long disease, or maybe you've been away from your family and your friends, your household for a long time. And then when you get better, when things start working better for you and you get reunited with them, you know, it, it's easier 
to, to smile. It's easier to laugh. It's easier. You know, everything's more lighthearted at that time. Everything is, you, you can be happy. The world seems like a better place and the sun seems to shine a little brighter. You're just a little happier. Your troubles seem to be far, far away from you. It just seems, you know, everything just seems to be much better. Now, there was a time in Israel's history, and this happened in quite a few times in their history, but there was a time uh, that because of sin and, and, and idol worshiping, that they were taken captive and they were removed. They were removed from their blessed, from their beloved land, the Canaan that they loved so much that God had given them for an inheritance. And they were taken out of there. But God always told them this, if they repented and they turned back to God with their whole heart, that He would, he would return them. He would return them to their, uh, to their land, to their good land. Now, one of the times that this happened is recorded in Psalm 126. In, one, in Psalm 126, verse 1 through 6, it says this, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him. And I'm sure that's where that song, bringing the sheaves, come from. You can, you can hear, you know, you can read the Bible and you know the Bible. And, and when you're reading, you can a lot of times see where these old hymns come from because they're based on doctrine of the Bible. They're based on things from the Bible. Bible. Go ahead and turn on over to Proverbs chapter uh, 14, verse 13. Proverbs 14, 13. Now there are times, you know, that even when you laugh, even when you laugh, you're not really that happy. There's times when it happens. There is a disorder called PBA uh, that causes some people to laugh at inappropriate times when they're sad or when they're angry or something. They'll laugh instead of instead of cry or, or whatever emotion they might might do. And, and and some people or most of us probably laugh when we get nervous. You know, you get a little giggle when you get nervous sometimes. So there's odd times that you laugh. Some people will fake a laugh. You know, they'll fake like that. They'll, they'll you know, phone and laugh so you don't know if they're sad, if they're angry, if they're happy, or what, if, what are they. But King Solomon, who, who God had blessed him to write a bunch of the Bible, uh, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. But Solomon had, had a time in his life when he was in vexation of spirit, vexation of heart. And, and uh, he was at this period of time and he had gotten everything that his heart desired. He said no matter what his eye had seen, he would get it for himself. And you know, he got so much, he had everything. You know, what can he get? The God has everything. And that's the way it was with Solomon. And you know what happened with Solomon? Everything seemed to be vanity to him. Just nothing made, had, nothing was worth anything to him. He had everything he wanted. What else was that? And it, it just never, it not, never seemed to be good. In Ecclesiastes 2, 2, he said, he said, I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? He just, nothing, nothing satisfied him anymore. You know, nothing made him happy anymore. Then he also said this in Ecclesiastes 7, 3. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. You know, there's a time when we should be, we should not be happy. We should not be laughing because James 4, 9 says this. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. You know, if in this world we received every single thing that we wanted, if we just like Solomon got everything we wanted, everything we saw we just got for ourselves, everything we desired we got it, if we got everything that we asked for, it wouldn't keep us happy for long. Just like Solomon, we wouldn't be happy for a long time, especially if we neglected the things of God. The Bible tells us very plainly, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? He'd give everything he had. Right? He would give everything he had or everything that he could get for it. Proverbs talks about those that have chosen evil, the evil things of the world over the good things of God. In Proverbs 14, 13, Proverbs 14, 13 says this, Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. Even in sorrow, sometimes you just cannot get satisfied or happy with anything. Go ahead and turn over. Uh, backward a little bit here to uh, Job. Go over to Job uh, chapter 5, verse 22, I believe it is. Job 5.22. Job 5.22. If I can find it here. 
The Hebrew word that laughter uh, comes from here is a word called salka. And it, uh, it's used for laughter in Genesis when both, when I, when I was telling you earlier about Abraham and Sarah, Sarah when they both laughed, they used that word, that particular word, uh, salka. And it, uh, and it meant laughter. It doesn't mean some other things too. And uh, in Exodus 32, 6, when Moses was on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments and he came back down off the mountain and uh, Aaron had made that golden calf and the people were worshiping that calf, they also use this for that word play there because it says this, uh, uh, and they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And that word that they used there, it was the same word that was used for laughter there. It implies that they were happy in what they were doing. They were happy in their sins. They were happy in the things they were doing. Another time that it's used was, is, was a little bit uh, different. You wouldn't think of probably. It uses that same word again in Genesis 39 for the word mock. When Joseph was in the house of Potiphar and, and, and Potiphar's wife wanted him to lie with her and he wouldn't. And then she uh, grabbed his garment and he ran out of the house. It says, uh, uh, it says in Genesis 39, 14, Then she called unto the men of, his house, of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. In other words, to laugh at us. It's the same word that was used when Abraham and Sarah both laughed. And God makes a point to, to Job one time that if a person hears the rebuke of God, and they, and they take that correction, they take it to heart, that chastisement, and they do it by being obedient to God. He talks about they will be happy in the things they would do. They won't be afraid of the things that the world can bring to you. In Job 5.22, uh, Job 5.22, it says, uh, At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. So if you, know, if you put your trust in God, Here's the thing, folks, and here's what Jesus Christ said, too. Should we fear men that can fear them that can destroy the body? You know, well, they can take everything you have, can't they? They can take all your stuff. Who should we fear, then? Fear God. Fear God, the one that can destroy both body and soul from hell. That's the one we are to fear. We put our trust in God. There, there shouldn't be anything that we'd be afraid of. Go ahead and look at uh, uh, Job 22, Job 22, 8. Job 22.18, rather, Job 22.18. There are those that ridicule other people, that mock them, that, that scorn them, that are laughing at them, and, and they scoff at them, they hold them in contempt, and they sneer at them, and, and we've seen that in the Bible quite often. People like to kick. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but there's a lot of people who like to kick others when they're down, don't they? They like, they like to add to their misery. And it's usually just because they don't agree with them about something, about something they've said or done. In Job 22, it's kind of the opposite, though. It's the, the innocent uh, that are doing the laughing. Job 22, 18 and 19. Job 22, 18 and 19 uh, says, Yet he filled their houses with good things. But the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad. And the innocent laugh them to scorn. Laugh them to scorn. They get, they get, they get the last laugh there or the best laugh there. Go ahead and turn on over to the New Testament to Matthew uh, chapter 9, verse 23. Matthew chapter 9, verse 23. In, uh, Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, God was telling Judah that they had committed the same kind of sins that Israel had committed. At this point, they were, they were divided into two different kingdoms. It was uh, uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, and uh, Judah, the southern kingdom. And, and for a long time, Judah was a holdout. Israel had turned over to idol worship just about yeah, all over. But Judah was still kind of a holdout. And they were worshiping God. And they were still serving God. And they were still doing the things that God had told them to do. And worshiping and sacrificing the way God had told them to do. But at some point, they didn't do that any longer. Sometimes they had turned over to do the same kind of things that, that uh, uh, Israel had done in uh, Ezekiel 23, 31, 32. says, Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. Therefore will I give her cup into thine hand. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It containeth much. Now Job, we were just talking about when his friends were there, and his three friends had come to uh, help him, come to comfort him. And what did he say to his friends? What miserable comforters you are. You're terrible comforters, you know. And they were pretty bad comforters, weren't they? Because they didn't really come there. They just came there to, 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 to 
you know, just make him try to confess to something. They wanted to confess to a secret sin. They kept saying, you've got a sin. You know, you've got a secret sin, some kind of sin that you're hiding, uh, and you won't come out with it. If you come out with it, God will, will probably make everything all right. He said, just come out and repent. Just say what your sin is and come out and do it, and then God uh, God will help you. But you know what? What Job, Job did have a uh, I mean, uh, rather, he did have a sin, but he, he kept telling people, he kept telling people that, uh, uh, he kept justifying himself, you know, I, I don't have a sin. You know, what Job even did, he even sacrificed for his kids, didn't he? Thinking maybe they had forgotten, but, you know, you can't, it's just the same with being saved, you can't sacrifice for someone else. But he, ju he justified himself, and he told them in Job 12, 4, I am as one mocked of his neighbor, who called upon God and answereth him, the just, upright man is left to scorn. So he saw himself, he saw himself as a, as a just and upright man. He saw all these people around laughing at him and, and, and laughing him to scorn. But I had you move, I had you turn over here to Matthew. When Jesus was here on earth, when he walked the earth as a man, when he was in the flesh, and although he went about doing only good, and the Bible says it, he went about doing good. That's all he did. We know that there was no, no bad in Jesus. He only went about doing good. The, the, uh, the religious leader ridiculed him the whole time he was here. They mocked him. They scorned him. They made fun of him all the time, everything he did. There was one particular time in here where he was, he was speaking to his uh, disciples, and he was answering questions of them and talking to them. And that was about John's, bapt uh, uh, John's fasting and stuff but, uh, and his baptism. But there was a man that came to him at this time. The Bible says he was a certain ruler. And he came to him and he said, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And, and the Bible says that Jesus went to the girl. He did go to her. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 23 and 24 says this, And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the minstrels and the people making noise, noise he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleeping. And the Bible says then, But they left him to scorn. They laughed at Jesus Christ to scorn him. They laughed at him. They just made, they ridiculed him. They made fun of him because of, of, of him saying that she is but asleep. Uh, turn over to, uh, back to uh, Psalms. But turn over to Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. Psalm 2, 1. In Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. We know this. God is the supreme ruler. Amen. He is, he rules. He rules and reigns from heaven. And nothing gets done unless God says that it gets done. I mean, every, every uh, flower that grows, every leaf that grows, every drop of rain that falls is by God. He's smarter, he's stronger, he's better, he's more able than any human man or woman that ever is or ever has been or ever will be on this earth. But you know what? There are still people that think that they can fight against God. There are still people that think that they're smarter than God. There's still people that think that they don't need God. They don't need anything that God has to offer. That they don't need Him for anything. They can do all on their own. But you know, the Bible says that God laughs at these foolish yes, people. God laughs at their foolishness. Psalm chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, says this. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. God laughs at that foolishness, doesn't he? He knows that it's foolish. He knows it's silly. Go ahead and turn over to, uh, to Psalm uh, chapter 37, verse 9. Psalm 37, 9. The devil certain of this that Satan he sits in his realm and he laughs he laughs I'm certain that he laughs and has a good time when he thinks he has the upper hand over God's people when he thinks that he has gotten somebody to get away from doing God's will or, or doing what God would have him to do or when he can get someone to quench the Holy Spirit God tells us don't quench the Holy Spirit don't right. quench it it's there to help you it's there to help you and lead you into righteousness and the truth but you know, we can. We always have free will with everything. We have free will with, with salvation, and we have free will with what we can do, whether we sin or not. And we can quench the Spirit. The Spirit's there telling us not to do it, we can go ahead and do it if we want to. And, uh, and, and, and I'm sure that when Satan gets people to do things like that, that he laughs, that he is, that he is 
just joyous that he can do that. But, but there's a saying, and it's, it's kind of a proverb, I guess, if you will. It says, he who laughs last, laughs best. And God will have the last laugh. You can bet on that. God will. If you're a gambler, you can bet on that. Uh, he, has, he has given the devil rule over this earth. Uh, the Bible does say that he is the God, the little g, God of this earth. And he does have the rule over the earth. But the Bible also tells us that at some point, it will all be taken back away from him and given back to Jesus. Right. Who is the rightful king. Oh, there Who is the rightful leader. He is his rule. He's the rightful ruler. And Satan, the Bible says, will be cast into the lake of fire. And it will be for eternity. That won't be for a little while. That will be for eternal, eternity. Yeah, because the Bible says their smoke ascendeth forever in there. Yes, sir. Forever. That doesn't ever get any less. One day God will laugh at Satan. He'll laugh at his angels and those that followers that went in after him that followed. They'll taste the wine of the wrath of God. And they will receive, as the Bible says, their due recompense. They will get all that they deserve. And I tell Terry all the time, what's, you know, what's the TV and these commercials come on, the people will say, this lawyer will say, let me get you what you deserve. Yeah, right. All the time you hear that. What happens if we get what we deserve, folks? Yeah, yeah really. We're in hell if we get what we deserve. Yeah. You know, the Bible makes that very, very plain. We deserve yeah. hell, but only by, by the glory of God, by the mercy of God, we are able then to have a home in heaven by what Jesus Christ has done for him. In Psalms 37, 9, 37, 9, it says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, they shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnashes against them with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth his day is coming. Yeah. God knows all things, doesn't he? Amen. Yeah. He knows the past, he knows the future, he knows the present. He knows all things, he knows what's going to happen to him. We worry about things, don't we? We concern ourselves and we worry about things, we lose sleep. God already knows the future. He already knows what's happening. I heard a preacher say many, many years ago that 95% that of the things that he worried about never came to fruition yeah, anyway. Right. And that's the way it is. You know, we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't worry the way that we do. Uh, turn over to Psalms chapter 52, verse 1. Psalm 52, 1. Now, there are, there are those that have been deceived by Satan. They have been. And they think that they can oppress, they think that they can persecute God's people, and they think they can do whatever they want. They don't think they'll be punished for it. Uh, they, they shall in time, though, experience the chastising of the Lord. And, and, and those that have been mistreated, those that have been abused by them, been oppressed by them, they'll be able to see that punishment. They'll be able to see uh, what have, what what's happening. They won't have any pity on them. They won't have pity on those people. God tells us to be tender-hearted and merciful one to another. But when God puts judgment on something, we're not to have we're not to have pity for it. It says this in Psalm 52, uh, verse one. What I said, 52. Yeah, that's what you said. Okay, let me turn to that then. Let me get there with you guys. This Psalm 52. Uh, 1 through 6 says, Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. The tongue devises mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Salem. Yeah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living, Salem. The righteous also shall see and fear not and shall laugh at him. Shall laugh at him. You know, it's hard to see somebody struggling. It's hard to see somebody in a bad place. But you know, when God has pronounced judgment and we understand that God has pronounced judgment, we're not to have pity. You know, we are to join with God and laugh at Him. Go ahead and turn over to uh, Psalm 59, 6. And I think that's where I turned to before. It was 59, 6. 59, verse 6. The evildoers, the people that do evil when they go against God, they think that God doesn't know what they're doing. They don't think that God can see the evil that they do. And they brag about the things that they do. And they show off and they're loud and they're arrogant. And they're thinking that they're no danger. 
But you know what? The Bible tells us that God sees all things, that he knows all things. He knows what's going on. And not only that, they say an elephant never forgets. God never forgets. God's the one never forgets. He remembers all things. He knows all things. Uh, you know, I don't know if the, you, could, you could say the analogy, he has a book that he puts them all in. But he knows all things. And I don't think he has to write things down. Remember, because God is perfect in all things. But it says this in 59.6. They return at evening, they make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth, swords are in their lips, for who, they, they say, doth hear. In other words, they're saying, God don't know what I'm doing. God don't see me, he don't hear me. But he does, folks, he does. He goes on to say, but thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. So God knows, he knows what's going on. Go ahead and turn over in your Bibles to Romans Chapter 10, verse 9. They'll tell you next year and come on up. I'm just going to, I'm going to read here something to you while they're coming up and getting ready. Here in Proverbs 1, Proverbs 1, uh, chapter 20, uh, chapter, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 20 says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse and the openings of the gates in the city she uttereth her words saying how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge turn you at my reproof behold i will pour out my spirit unto you i will make known my words unto you because i have called and you refused i have stretched out my hand and no man regarded but you have said it not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. God gave them the words and they, they turned away from it. They wouldn't listen to it at all. Here's what he says he's going to do at, that, at the end of time. He says, I will laugh at your calamity. Yeah. I will mock when your fear cometh. You know, after, after it's too late. You know, God offers that, but after it's too late, it's too late. Luke 6, 21 says, Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are they that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Job 8, 20, 21 says, Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers, till he fill my mouth with laughter and my lips with rejoicing. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 says that there is a time to weep and there is a time to laugh. Yes, sir. We have some good times on this earth. We have some times when we have a good time. When we, when we laugh and we have fun, we enjoy ourselves. But there also are plenty of times when we grieve, when we have pain, when we have sorrow, when we have terrible, terrible times. But why, why do those things happen to us? God allows us to have the times when we laugh and we have the good times. He, has, he allows us to have those times because that's what it's going to be like in heaven. Yeah. Happiness all the time, you know, just joy and happy all the time. But why does he allow us to have the grief then? Why does he allow us to have the pain? Because that's what hell's going to be like. He wants you to have a little tiny taste. You got a little tiny taste of each one. You got a little tiny taste of joy on this earth. But he says it won't be nothing like the joy that will be in heaven. Right. You got a little bitty taste of pain. You got a little bitty taste of grief on this earth. But that's only a little tiny taste of what it will be like in hell. It will be, it'll be way, way beyond what you can comprehend or what you can understand uh, now anyway. It will be miserable. Hell will be miserable. But you know what the good news is? The good news is the Bible says you don't have to go there. That's right. You don't have to go to heaven. Oh, uh, hell. You, you, go, you don't have to go to heaven if you don't want to, but I don't understand why you wouldn't want to. But in heaven, all you have to do to go to heaven is to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's all you have to do. He's the Lord and Savior. While you're alive here on the earth, while there is breath in you, while you're alive, you have to, you have to accept Him. Because you will, you will face that physical death. Every one of us will face that physical death. As it appointed unto men once to die, but after this to judgment. We'll all live and we all die. Everybody has to. That physical death. But you know what? If you don't accept that free gift of salvation, then you will also suffer a spiritual death. The second death. And that will be the bad one. That's the one that causes you to burn forever in hell and then in the lake of fire. And all you got to do is follow this Romans road to salvation. It's easy. God made it really simple, really easy, so that you couldn't say, I didn't understand, Lord, when you get in front of me. I didn't understand how to do, be saved. So it's easy. It's easy. He's made it very, very simple. It's a very simple. Don't be like those that, that, that 
that are too proud or, or, or whatever the problem is that they don't accept that free, free gift, that easy, easy gift. It's here in, uh, here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says that, if thou, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Whosoever. Right. Not just not just me, not just you, no. not just the preacher, the deacon, not just the good people. That's right. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That sounds pretty easy to me. Sounds like a good deal to me. Amen. Uh, my brother William would tell me, he said, that he remember many, many years ago, I don't know if you guys remember Joe Hall that used to come here and preach. Yeah. He said that Joe come come here and he preached a sermon and he entitled it, "What a Bargain." Oh yeah, I remember that. What a bargain. I do. And he said, you know, he was he said he, he look what God got. He got my sins. You know, he got all the horrible, terrible things that I that I had to give, and he gave it to me for free. He said, "What a bargain I got. What a deal." And you know that is a great deal. It's a perfect deal. It's, it's you know there's nothing like it. There's nothing that that we can do to earn our own salvation. So we don't have to pay for it. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, gave up great riches in heaven, and He came down to die for us so that we could have life and we could have it more abundantly. As we sing here a song of invitation, if God's spoken to you, if you haven't been saved, if you're not saved, then we'll show you exactly how to do that, how easy and simple it is. Go ahead and stand up if you're able to. If you're not, you can remain seated. Go ahead and stand up, and if God's spoken to you, you come on up, and, and we will t we'll tell you exactly how it is, more perfectly expounded unto you, how it is to be saved, if you didn't quite understand that. God made it very easy. He, may, he ain't going to laugh at you. No, sir. Nobody in here is going to laugh at you. I can tell you this right now, if you come up and you give your life to Christ, we'll be all glad for you. We'll be happy for you. We'll celebrate with you. We'll welcome you into the family of God. As we sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come. Missed it. Yep. I appreciate you know, shaking hands and seeing my brothers and sisters.